So welcome everybody to our How to Become a Dental Assistant seminar. We have two special guests today, um, myself as well. So we have three guests um, and we're going to be talking about our path to dental assisting and how that can really benefit you in your application process and when you do become a dental assistant. So we have Cara and Daniela. They're both from the States. And Cara, if you want to start us off, go right ahead. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kara. I'm a D1 at Nova Southeastern here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so I basically started dental assisting just a couple years ago when I started my application process. There's me at Aspen with Dr. G, the hygienist in the middle, um, a couple of the assistants, me trying on loops for the first time, clearly not knowing how to look in them. Um, <laughs> and then I actually did a bachelor's in biology and then did a master's in biotechnology where I figured out, okay, this isn't really the route I want to go. And then just fell in love with dentistry. So kind of went in a bunch of different directions and found my way here at Nova. Nice. Right. No, sorry, I pronounced your name incorrectly again. Yeah, I'm just talking um, about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're Daniela, good. Do you want to go next? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Daniela. I'm a pre dental student. I graduated from FIU in 2021. I'm currently studying to take the DAT. Um, I, however, became a dental assistant when, once I graduated from high school. I did a program via my high school, so it was a four-year four -year program. There you can see me uh, learning how to take x-rays on Dexter. That was our special patient. Um, we also learned how to take impressions and a couple of like different things, but yeah, I did it through high school, and once I graduated, I got my certification, and I started working as a dental assistant at the age of 18. Thank you, Daniela. <laughs> um, and my name is Giselle. I have been dental assisting since a few years now, but I've got my start back in high school when I was starting shadowing. And so um, in 2020 is when I kind of became a full-time dental assistant and office manager in a dental office. So today we're going to be talking about kind of our steps to taking these different experiences, whether it's from high school, from university, all of that. Um, and hopefully today can be really beneficial for you. So we have a few questions. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. We're going to be uh, answering them at the end. Uh, another thing is that if you want to get volunteer hours, we're going to send a link in the chat at the end. So stay tuned. Everything will be at the end as well. Okay. So why don't we start with our questions? So, Carol, why don't you kind of talk about what motivated you to become a dental assistant and how did that really, how did that experience inform your decision to pursue dentistry? Oh, <laughs> we have some technical difficulties. One second. There you go. I think she should be able to unmute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was like, I can't unmute it. Um, <laughs> so what motivated me? So I had, I was already applying to schools and I just really wanted to get that hands-on experience in no, because there's, you can only see, you only know so much when you're at, when you're shadowing versus when you're actually hands-on assisting. So I wanted to know exactly what I was getting myself into before fully committing to this career. Um, and really the best way to do that was through a corporate uh, dental office, Aspen, because they just threw me in and had me doing so many different or assisting in so many different procedures. Um, I learned so much in, in literally only like two months in the beginning and was fully able to do x-rays in one month because of how many patients we were getting in every day. Uh, so like the the experience was just priceless there. Um, and that's kind of why I started assisting to begin with. So it wasn't the opposite. It wasn't the reverse of I assisted and then realized I wanted to go to dental school it was if I'm going to dental school, I really want to know as much as I possibly can. So I'm not like in this whole whirlwind of a totally different field when I start school. 
Awesome. And how about you, Daniela? So for me, it was a bit different. Um, I was unsure what high school was going to go to. I had like a couple options. And then my school took us on a field trip to the high school we went to. It was called Miami Lakes Tech. Um, it's what's known as a magnet high school that you graduate with some type of certification. Not only did they have dental assisting, they had like a couple of different things like nursing and um, engineering and stuff like that. And I went into the classroom and I really liked uh, everything that they had to like offer me. And out of all the schools that I had visited to go for high school, that was the one that most caught my attention. I was like, okay, I'm just going to join the dental assisting program and like see if I end up liking it. And if I do, then maybe I can pursue a career in like dentistry. And that's exactly what happened. I started shadowing. Well, we started going to clinicals. We would call them clinicals as this is, you can see my classroom. We had, a, we had like practices there with Dexters and stuff like that. And that picture in the corner where you see us on the bus, that was our first clinical. So it's the first time that we ever went to the UF clinic because we worked uh, in partner with the UF clinic. And that was the first time we ever went to the clinic. And that's when I really knew like that, that day was when I really knew like, okay, this is why I want to pursue dental. Like it was that day. But yeah, for me, it was different. For me, it was via trying to decide which high school to go to. And it just so happened to be this one. Nice. So I think in uh, Canada, we don't really have a program like that where in high school you can start doing dental assisting classes. So that's really interesting. Um, Kara, how did you, um, how did your experience as a dental assistant prepare you for dental school, both academically and personally? Well, personally, so I know a lot of us who are either applying or currently in the field or in school have, you know, dealt with imposter syndrome. Um, I just, when I got accepted, I just couldn't, like, I just, I still couldn't see myself in that, in that position. I was really struggling. So working as an assistant gave me so much confidence, like when it came to communicating with patients and being a leader in the office, like there was this one day I had to be a lead DA and I had to make sure everything was just running smoothly, making sure everybody was where they needed to be. Um, and I was like, well, if I can do this, then I, I actually feel like I'm in the right place. Like everything just felt like it was falling into place. So by the time I started school, I just had my confidence was so, was so much higher than it was before. So like working as a dental assistant personally affected me that way. Um, and then academically, obviously, learning, like even just like learning the different names of the uh, tools and the instruments uh, and the order of, you know, indirect versus direct restorations and just learning so many things that when I started school, it was like, I saw it, I knew it, it made it 10 times easier, especially like the first semester was just like, okay, I don't have to worry about this and I can focus on neuroanatomy where I have no idea what I'm doing, you know? So it was, it, it helped me in so many ways. It was amazing. And so Daniela, how about you? So what were, um, what has been like some of the most important things you've learned in like your pre-dental course with that? Um, sorry, the most important things you've learned in your pre-dental course work so far. And how did you, how do you plan to apply these lessons in your future practice as a dentist? Well, I've been a dental assistant for five years, so I have seen like a plethora of like different cases and I've also worked in like different clinics. So I've been able to experience people from different demographics and different areas and work alongside like a lot of different dentists. Um, and I feel like just that experience alone of being able to work with Diff alongside different people and treat different people from different areas is going to allow me to treat patients at another level because I feel like as a dental assistant and I'm sure Cara can like agree with this as well you already learn so much and once you go to dental school you now view things kind of in like a different way as you would view them as a dental assistant because now you're viewing it as a dentist so now you have like these two different views and experiences on how to treat people and I feel like that just makes you like overall like a better dentist because you see how much dental a dental assistant does and how they help the patient but now you see it as a dentist 
and you're able to help them in like different forms and just being I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm like explaining myself correctly but you're able to help them in like different ways than just being a dentist because a dentist is saying you're almost like you you're there before the doctor gets there so you're most of the time you're talking to your patients one-on-one -on -one more than what the dentist does so you're able to experience different things with your patients and treat them better and I feel like that's something that would definitely help in the future. Nice and Kara on top of that could you explain how working as a dental assistant kind of changed your perception of the dental professional profession and the role of a dentist? Yeah I, I definitely view dentists as this one um, like this one leader over over others before I kind of knew anything but it's not it's definitely not like that it's about working in the office as a team you know it has to run every everybody it's not this there's no hierarchy everybody everybody's equal including the patients everybody is treated with respect and if you're working as a team the entire um the whole day will run smoothly you know the front office the assistants hygienist dentist so that definitely uh, working as an assistant, it, it made me see how how much teamwork you know played into the uh, the productivity and success of of the office space. Also, I, which I love personally, I love learning. I love school. Clearly, I've been in it for like twenty years. <laughs> Still have a few years to go, but it's nice to know that dentistry is a continuous learning process. You know, even after your dentist, you're, that's why it's called a practice. You you have to keep practicing and learning taking new courses, you know, if you want to do implants, if you want to do uh, more intense uh, or more, I guess, uh, specialized extractions. So that's what I love about, about the field as well. It's, you're always going to be learning. So it's definitely for lifelong learners. Mm -hmm. Nice. So for Daniela, how did your experience in the high school dental assistant program kind of prepare you for the role as a dental assistant and what skills did you gain from that program? So um, as we all know, high school's four years. The first year, um, we're learning basic like first aid related things. Our second year, we take an anatomy class and we have to pass it in order to move to our third year, which is our actual like dental assisting year. And that year is like a lot of theory-based things like learning the name of instruments, how to use an instrument, a lot more theory-based, a lot more classroom. We would sometimes go in the back to work with like Dexter, as you can see there. Um, but most of the time it was more theory, I would say more like book work. And then our fourth year, actually it's more book work at the beginning, our third year. Towards the end, it's a lot more hands-on. And then our fourth year in the beginning from August, to December, we're like perfecting techniques. So like learning um, how to take impressions, making sure we know how to do them correctly, learning how to take uh, x-rays correctly, making sure we're passing the instruments in the correct way to the dentist, how to um, just like these normal things that you would have to do in a, in a clinic. We had to make sure that we learned how to do them before. We just had a lot going on besides dental assisting because since we were in a normal high school, we also had other high school work. And I would say that once we got to the, our clinicals, which started January of our senior year, we knew quite a lot. Like we knew how to take x-rays and impressions, but we never did x-rays like on a real person it was always on Dexter which is a lot easier to do because you're able to like move their head in a certain way and there's some x-rays that are very difficult to do on people so that's something that we actually learned in to do in the clinic but I would say that in the sense of like preparing us to actually do the hands-on work it it helped like it definitely did and once we got to the clinic we already knew what we had to do how we had to talk to patients what procedures like what instruments to take out for procedures that was also a main thing like knowing looking at the schedule and knowing like okay today we're having an extraction this is everything I need to take out I need to go into the lab and take all these things out that's something that we had to learn how to do so they taught us everything we needed to know prior to going like all the knowledge we needed to have before going what hands what was hands-on we definitely learned more there than in the actual classroom because you're actually working with people nice and I think um with that type of program, it definitely helps you outside of the classroom when you're actually going to see in the workplace setting 
how to handle the patients and all that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Kara, in your experience, what are some of the common misconceptions of the dental profession? And how did your time, uh, and Danielle, maybe you can add on to this, how did your time as a dental assistant kind of help you better understand the realities of the field? Um, so we were kind of talking about this earlier, how uh, a lot of people have, unfortunately, poor experiences going to the dentist. Um, and you know, everyone of course is scared of, it's like the needle. That's what's what everybody's scared of. What, so at least what I'm learning in school is that it's, I didn't realize how minimally invasive dentistry has become. So there's actually, there's even um, like what we learned was for, for special needs patients and kids, they have other, I guess, techniques of, of doing, of doing fillings that aren't as invasive that don't require any um, anesthesia. There's like SDF, which is the silver diamine fluoride, which I'm sure Danielle has heard of. Um, then we all know, you know, heard of like sealants and stuff like that. So, we, and we also learned uh, when caries, uh, cavities are arrested or just white spot lesions, we, we are taught to not just go in, you know, and drill. It's, uh, we have to identify if they're arrested because you don't want to go in surgically. Um, you want to, it's called, we, we would monitor it. We put an M on it. So like, I didn't realize that the dentistry was becoming so minimally invasive, I guess, uh, which I really like. So we want to do everything we can before we, you know, use the needle. So that was definitely a misconception that, that I had. How about you, Daniela? That was really cool. I didn't know about that. What you said, I didn't know about that because I, the <clears> first time I, the first clinic I worked with, it was a lot more adults than, than uh, children, but we did get every once in a while, but it was uh, a clinic where a lot of like underprivileged people would go. So we didn't have like a lot of full up to date things. So we would have to like work on kids that were scared of the needles and like how I was telling you earlier, like I was terrified of the dentist. So I knew that like, whenever I got a patient that was terrified, like I had to help them calm down in some type of way and help them feel better, at least feel safe with us and know that we weren't going to work on them regardless of, um, you know, we wouldn't work on them if they were scared, like they had to trust us in order for us to, to work on them. And I feel like working there, I, I did realize that a lot of dentists were trying to help their patients because I personally, like how I told you earlier, I went to the dentist, I was terrified of him. I didn't like going and he didn't help. Like he didn't let my mom go inside. He would have me alone. And I feel like a lot of dentists now, they understand this and they know like kids are scared. They need their parents there. They, they need to feel safe. And I, a lot of clinics now from my experience of working different ones are allowing us uh, are allowing, sorry, are allowing um, parents to come in and are making sure that they don't work on the patient unless the patient feels safe. So I think that's something a plus. Nice. I think adding on top of that for me, I think one of the misconception is people kind of think like, oh, the dental assistant only just sucks the saliva out. They only do is just suction, right? But I think there's so much more to that, right? I think, you know, knowing exactly when to provide a material or instrument to the dentist, knowing how to control, you know, if something goes wrong or, you know, kind of calming down the patient, dealing with the sterilization, all of that. So um, for me, that was definitely one of them. So when I kind of went full-time as a dental assistant, I thought, okay, we do more than just suctioning and you know, welcoming the patient. It's so much more than that. You have to do forehanded dentistry. You kind of have to mentally know, okay, the doctor is going to finish this. This is the next instrument that I have to hand them and kind of just being on top of everything. And okay. every, every, uh, what you were saying, like every dentist is different. Mm -hmm. So they all use different materials and they all like to do things in their own order. Well, not necessarily order, but like in their own way. So it's, like Daniela, like if you wanted to elaborate on that, have you worked with a lot of different dentists who have their own, their own way of doing things and you have to remember like what setup to use? Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. That's something that I struggled with a lot, like working in different clinics. Like I would have to relearn how to do the setup. So I'm like, okay, this, yeah. he doesn't like this instrument. He likes this yeah. one, but 
<laughs> especially for like extractions they're like no I like this oh my- one because it's thicker and I'm like okay and like I would have to like relearn and I would like take pictures of everything and I would go home and like okay he likes this he likes this he likes that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like what are you doing like you already know how to do them I'm like yeah but he doesn't like using the instruments that I'm normally <laughs> used to so I would have to relearn. right and then they'll, and then if it's like, not there they'll, they'll like send you out of the room and you have to go run and get it and then so it's just easier for like everybody if you if that's just like a it's like a cherry on top if you if you can if you can memorize each individual dentist setup then that's just like making it so much easier more efficient for them you know yeah they also have like their like their uh office space like the actual drawer set up like they have it different like I know in one clinic we had like okay these, this is for fillings this is for something right. else right? like and a lot of in a lot of places that I worked they were a lot different I would have to like relearn how to run around, <laughs> run around literally run around the office <laughs> yeah I think yeah adding on top of that like I think with dental assisting programs like you're taught by the book like this is what you have to do yeah. and then you go work with the dentist who's been practicing for 30 years has dealt with different dental assistings and they have their own way so it's kind of different from learning by the book till just throwing into the real world so and and also one more one more thing to add is something that was so weird for me was um going into dental school not only as a d1 but all all the years in the clinic they have, they use a rubber dam every single time. Yeah. yeah. And we don't yeah. do that in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was really weird. I was like, why is everyone, are they all doing endo? Like, why are they using rubber dams? But that's yeah. just the way they teach you for, you know, isolation. But um, yeah. it's just, it's just funny. Everything is, is so different. Every, everyone has their own way, um, including each school has their own way. I'm of doing sure it. when I'm sure when you were learning to put those rubber dams, you're like, <laughs> what is this? Why am I, I literally, that was the hardest part of, of the, of the clinical part so far was the rubber dam. The rubber dams are the worst part. Oh they my kept God. like my, I had a practical last week and it, and it broke four times. Yeah. It, it took up 30 minutes of my practical time and I, I was sweating. Oh <laughs> I was like, of course. <laughs> like please <laughs> work like a, you're just oh like God. Oh, great. like take this is what's down. gonna take me down the, the dam the dam yeah oh my gosh I hated them so much I, I hate them but you know whatever it's yeah. just for the next four years of my life so <laughs> <laughs> so Daniela how did you kind of balance your responsibilities as a high school student with the demands of the dental assisting program like you said it was four years and what kind of strategies did you use to manage your time effectively? So I'm going to tell you guys what my dental assisting teacher would always tell me. And when you're young in high school, we're very hard headed and we don't like to listen. But I would tell her, like, why are you giving us so much work? Because not only were we doing dental assisting things, but she wanted to prepare, prepare us in life like we she really wanted us to be adults and like not have to depend on our parents to do anything. And we had to do CPR certifications. We had to do medical assisting certifications. Like I can tell you like how many certifications I have thanks to my dental assisting Mm -hmm. teacher. She would tell us that we would have to learn how to juggle. And I would tell her, I don't know how to juggle. Like this is too many things at once. Like how am I supposed to do that? She was like, you'll learn by the, by the end of these four years, you're going to learn how to juggle. And man, did I learn how to juggle. I would say that what helped me the most was, uh, sorry if you guys hear my dogs. Um, I would buy at the beginning of the year, you know, those big calendars that you can like write on like have on your desk. I would buy those and I would write my assignments as I would, as I was getting them, I would write them on my calendar and I would know like what days everything were due. Cause you have a lot of classes and I was taking AP honors classes I was vice president of my class. So I had a lot on my plate. I was like, okay, I need to have time to have fun because I'm also a high school student and have time to like learn. So I feel like what really helped me the most was having the calendar and visually seeing um, when everything was due so that I was able to like balance everything correctly. And sometimes I would have five exams in a day and I'm like, okay, well, gotta learn how to juggle. And I spent the weekend studying, even if I had to spend one Sunday that I wouldn't go out and be with my friends. I'm like, it's just one Sunday, like, oh, like, but I would say definitely like writing everything out. I'm very a visual learner and just writing everything out helped. I feel that's, that was like the main, the main thing, writing everything out. And sometimes asking my teacher, can you please move your exam? And she'll be like, no, you need to learn how to juggle. But uh, yeah, definitely writing everything out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
it's okay. Um, Kara, in your opinion, what are the most important qualities for a dental assistant to have? And how did you kind of develop these qualities during your time as a dental assistant? Because you said that you didn't have any prior training. You kind of just went mm -hmm. to it. What were kind of the qualities that you think are the most important for that field? Uh, listening, asking questions, and asking to physically do it, like be shown, you know, be shown it once, and then you have to physically do it to learn it. I'm also, um, like Daniela said, like I'm a very visual learner, so like I can see it and get the idea, but it wasn't like for the X-rays. Once I started doing it, like I started with bite wings, like the easiest ones. I'm like, okay, got that. Then started with the anteriors. Okay, got that. Then posterior, and then it just started to come together. Like I asked so many questions and I was just very, I stayed very focused. Um, I was also going to say, um, what, well, we kind of already mentioned this, but like learning the setups, like what works best for each, for each dentist, but um, the also picking up like your speed with everything. Um, but yeah, I would just say like active listening, asking as many questions as you can and um, befriending everybody. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I made so many friends with the other, like the other assistants that I had Janice. I asked so many questions that um, they were in the, they were like more than happy to help me too. So like that helped a lot, but it was, it was a lot. It was like, what do they say? Like uh, drinking through a fire hose, like mm -hmm. the first month or two, it was just so much, um, but it felt like I was in school again. So it was, it was fun for me to be able to learn that much in a short amount of time. I think for me, um, two things that I kind of learned as important qualities is observing. You have to really observe kind of everything, see what the dentist mm -hmm. is, see how the patient is reacting, all of that. And the other thing is kind of researching on your own time. For example, for me, the first time I did uh, a root canal with the dentist like it was a while since I did a root canal as a, an assistant um, and so after that I kind of went back did some YouTube searches you know what is the process what was you know the doctor using when he was filing the tooth and all of that what was irrigation like I had to do the research on myself because you can't sometimes you can't ask all those questions with the doctor there and the patient you know so um, definitely I would recommend when you do become a dental assistant or you're starting out as a dental assistant is to observe kind of everything, write mm -hmm. it down, take mental note. And then if you don't know something on your own time, research it and yeah. write those out. So Diana, do you want to maybe add on to that as well? Yeah, I did. Um, so for when I started doing my clinicals, I would walk around with a, like a composition notebook and I would just write down everything. Like I would write down the setups. I would write down any question that I had and answers that I got. I would write everything down when I would go home, I would type everything up in my computer. So I would, you know, it's like refreshing. Um, also, I think it was part of like our, our homework to like at the end of the week, show it to like our, our teacher that we have, um, everything that we had done that week and that we had asked questions. So I, yeah, if there's like one main thing you need to know is to ask questions, regardless of how annoying you feel you are, asking questions is the most that is going to help you not only to learn dental assisting things, but also to learn dental things like procedures that you're going to do once you become a dentist, you can ask questions on that. And that's something that I personally still do to this moment. I ask the dentist that I work with, like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you adding this and not this? Like, that's something that trust me will help you a lot in the future and sometimes they they don't know the answer they're like well I just do it because that's how I learned how to do it or sometimes I'll tell you like oh I do this because I feel like this this solution is easier than doing this that they teach you in school and that's and all of that I write down so I know because that's useful information that you can have so definitely yeah. ask questions like questions I would say is like a main thing asking questions yeah knowing the knowing the why like you said yeah knowing the why behind the what will automatically you'll you'll remember it because it makes sense yeah definitely sure and so kind of jumping to um patient communication how did you guys when you were working as a dental assistant how did that kind of affect your interactions with patients and maybe Cara, like or Cara, i'm not sure if you're seeing patients right now are you, are you seeing no 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 right, right now we're just assisting 
Interesting. Okay. So just, you know, how did that kind of affect your interactions with patients? And what did you learn about communication and patient care as a dental assistant? Um, definitely to choose your words carefully. <laughs> um, you can't, you know, don't talk about blood. Don't talk about pus. Don't talk about needles. Um, just don't say any of it. <laughs> <laughs> just show that you're always listening and stay calm the whole time. I would always put music on. I would always ask them, what kind of music do you like? And I would put music on in the back or I'd put like a show or a movie on and just make them extremely, you know, as, as comfortable as you can feel in a dental office. So uh, I would, I would just say to choose your words carefully because I even had, you know, I had a um, pre-dent come in with me one day and um, I mean, I'm just sharing this because it's a good learning experience for you guys. It's not to say like, oh, this was wrong. Da, 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 da. I'm just saying, cause we all have to, you have to start somewhere, but, um, I had a pre-dent come in and shadow me one, like assisting one day. And, um, we, he, the patient was in the chair and we were pulling up the radiographs behind him and it was a huge infection or something. And then he goes, Whoa, that's gross. And I was like, Oh my God. And I had to pull him out and I'm like, Hey, just next time. Don't, you know, don't say that. <laughs> don't comment on any, like, <laughs> appearance like just don't like have an opinion about stuff like let's wait till we leave the room or da, da, da. so you yeah. just have to be very very conscious about what you're saying in front of the patient because imagine mm -hmm. if you're the patient like put yourself in the patient's shoes Definitely. they would feel maybe embarrassed or you know yeah exactly exactly or like you don't want to you know scare them like in thinking they have this horrible problem that's you can't fix yeah yeah you yeah um, I would say the same thing, like making sure your patients are comfortable. Like I, you have to learn to talk a lot, like just to yeah. make sure they're comfortable. The more you talk to the person, the more comfortable they feel, the more they're able to trust you, the more they'll allow the dentist to do their job. So definitely like talk to them. You know, sometimes the dentist takes a bit long to get into the, into the room. So you're able to ask some questions like, how was your day? Like, what have you done today? And, you know, conversations start from there. And as long as you make them feel comfortable, like everything will be fine. But I also agree with the whole, what you were saying, the whole don't say things in front of patients like blood or pus or needles. You would be surprised how many people are just get petrified from hearing the word blood or needle. Like they get super yeah. scared. So definitely like make sure your patients are comfortable 24 seven, talk to them. The most and also the, the like, like, that's why we write notes, you know, like for the doctor, like that's why we behind the chair, we write, we don't say it out loud. Mm -hmm. You have to write that down. That's true. I think adding on to that for me with my experience, I think positive affirmations for the patients are really important. I remember we had one patient, the first thing he comes in, he was like, I'm nervous, I'm petrified of the dentist, all that. And you know, the doctor and I were talking to him. And once we were doing the procedure, you know, every like few minutes, I'd be like, you know what, you're doing great. Like, wow, this is not so bad. And he was, you know, giving me thumbs up. He's like, okay, yeah, I'm good. And for me, one thing that I really um, do with the patients is I tell them like, okay, we're almost done. You know, you're doing great. We're almost done. And that kind of helps them like relax. Like, okay, it's almost done. And I had a patient and he said, you know, because of what you said, like everything is okay. We're almost done. We're almost finishing the procedure. They kind of relaxed. And they, they told me, they're like, that really helps me. Thank you for doing that. So mm -hmm. I think one of the big things you're going to learn as a dental assistant is communication. You get to see how the doctor is also communicating with the patients. And one thing that I like to do is I like to remember things about the patient. If they come every often, you know, I ask them if for their family, oh, what are you doing with work? And how's the work doing? How's, you know, school going on? And when they see that you remember these things and you're building kind of that relationship, that's going to last like a while. And that's going to kind of be in their head. Like, okay, you know, Gazelle remembers me and, you know, they take care of me when I'm at the office. So, yeah. Dang. Those are the things to write down in the notes, like in the little notes section, I would write down yeah. like as a pet dog named Susie last next time, how Susie was doing stuff like that. Like it's nice. Okay. You the patients feel better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Daniela, do you want to kind of talk about the process after finishing your high school program, how did you kind of jump into the office environment? So what did you do? Did you kind of say, hey, I have a certificate? Like what was the process for you? So we were already uh, doing like our hours at the clinic where I got offered the job. Um, 
everyone in our high school like works there straight out of school like they tend to hire us just a lot of us tend to leave because it, it makes a conflict with school they want you to work and then go to school which a lot of us didn't want to do so I actually worked in the clinic from January till August so like right up to when I started my undergrad and then I I never went back and then COVID hit and then I couldn't go back at all. I wanted to, you know, focus on school for a bit and then find somewhere where I was able to do part-time because they didn't allow part-time. But it, the moment you graduate from high school, you already have, or the moment you graduate from high school, you do one more month and then you have your certification and you can work anywhere. And Karen, how about you? Like, what kind of advice would you give to students that want to become dental assistants, but they don't really have any prior experience? Uh, how can they get their foot in the door with, you know, asking a dentist and kind of, what's the word, like kind of, you said it when we were talking, kind of, yes. pushing, you know what I mean? Just trying to yeah, yeah. say like, you know what you're doing and you're a fast learner and all that. How can yeah. students, you know? Yeah. Go? So I, I really think that they are happy when, when they have students in there because they know that we, um, you know, like pre-dental students, they know we want to learn and they know that that's where we're going. Like we want to go to dental school. So I just told, I went into um, Aspen and said, they're like, well, do you know how to take x-rays? And I'm like, no, they're like, do you have a certificate? I'm like, no. I was like, I'm a really, really fast learner. Um, I've, I'm applying to schools, da, 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 da. And um, just to, I mean, I, I was just confident in myself. Like I knew I could learn because like I'm a student, like I know I can pick things up as you guys can too. Um, I think they could just tell I was hardworking and then I proved it because I was getting better in like just a couple of weeks. And then they, they commented on it. They said, they're like, wow, you really are, you know, you are a really quick learner and um, thank you. They were just really appreciative that I was helping out too, because uh, like we were saying earlier, there uh, a lot of offices are short on dental assistants. So um, I think if you just go in there showing you're passionate, you're willing to learn, you know, say, say you want to learn and they'll take you in. Um, and I didn't ask also like for when it comes to like pay, like sat like hourly, like I didn't even, I didn't even care. I was like, I just want to experience. I really just want to do this. I want to learn, you know? How about you, Daniela, any tips for students? Everything she said was exactly the same <laughs> way for me. I just, as long as you show, for me, it was a bit different because for me, I was already, working at that clinic so they saw like how quickly like I was doing things and how quickly I was learning and they offered me the the job and I obviously I said yes but if you show that you're willing to learn and you can go to any clinic you can start off maybe by just shadowing and be like hey like is there any way like I can work here just show that you're confident that you're able to learn quickly and I'm sure you'll you'll get the job like there's everyone's every single dentist is looking for a dental assistant right now yeah ever. yeah mm -hmm. perfect um we have questions I just kind of wanted to touch a little bit based on my experience um but ladies is there anything else you kind of wanted to add before we get to questions or I also wanted to add um I I also asked my uh I, I like I wanted to ask, go through my pre-dental society at USF and ask um, if there were any opportunities first through there, because I did shadow through my pre-dental society first before assisting. So like I, they saw that I shadowed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that helped or not, but it definitely like gave me some sort of background. I would just reach out to as many people, places like you have so many resources if you're in school. Um, so use them, you know, and, and you don't know what you might make connections that you never thought uh, you would make because one thing will add to another thing. You'll meet someone through there. You know, it's like a domino effect. Agreed. Diana, anything else for you? Same thing. Find out through your pre-dental societies in your school. Gazelle's always posting things, maybe like places that you shadow, ask, ask them. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you'll find, you'll be able to find the job. I'm a hundred percent sure. Nice. Okay, perfect. So um, for those that are here, we're going to uh, answer the questions, but I just wanted to kind of touch on on my experience as a dental assistant, because I do have kind of a unique experience <laughs> in the field. Um, 
So I've been kind of in the field since high school. So I started out shadowing, doing co-op with two different dentists. And from there, once I kind of graduated, came to Toronto, I went to, I was working at a pizza store and right across from it was a dental office. And one day the dentist comes in and I was kind of shy. And my coworker was like, Gazelle, that's the dentist. Like, you should talk to her. You should go shower her. I was like, no, it's okay. And she comes over and my coworker was like, you know what? This is Gazelle. She would love to come work for you. And, you know, would you, you know, be willing to take her in as a student? And she said, yeah, like, come on over. Um, and she was the first dentist that like, I'll never forget. She, when I was shadowing her, she said, Gazelle, come, you're going to sit in this chair, the assistant chair, and you're going to start helping with the assistant because I've observed her for a while. And she told me, she's like, Gazelle, I'm going to teach you things that I didn't learn in dental school. I learned from my mentors and I'm going to pass that on to you. And so that really like really motivated me because it's like, there's people there that want to help students. Um, and so from there, that's kind of where I got my dental assisting experience in a bit. And then I went to our on-campus on at York, our on-campus uh, dental office. And I just went up to them. I said, hey, you know, I didn't even ask them for a job. I said, you know what? We are this pre-dental club. I would love to promote you in any way that we can, nothing in return. And the office manager was like, do you want to work here? And I said, okay. Um, and so that's where he kind of taught me more about the front desk area. So I was kind of multifaceted with knowing the assistant part, but also reception. And so from there, um, I kind of transferred into an oral surgery office and then COVID hit. So in COVID in 2020, I totally forgot that I had my resume on Indeed. And I noticed I kept getting a message from the doctor that I work with now. He's like, you know, I saw your resume. Like, would you like to come in for an interview? And I kind of pushed it off a bit because it was in the middle of the pandemic. I wasn't sure if it was safe enough in a dental office. And another time he requested another time. And so, you know what? I was like, I'm going to go in for the interview. And when I went there, I it was a brand new office. Um, he didn't really have anybody there. So I said, you know, based on my prior experience, I do have reception experience. I do have dental assisting experience. And he was kind of like surprised about that. He thought I was, you know, just like a regular student. He's like, how did you have all this experience? Um, and so from there, although I was a little bit rusty with my dental experience, like I said before, I researched as well. I did my own research with what's the tooth numbering? What are these instruments called? And also the doctor helped me as well. But slowly I was asking more questions and just getting the hang of everything. How does he like to have his dental assistant working with him with four-handed dentistry? Um, so it's a lot, but it's also so rewarding. And so at that office, I did kind of everything. Like I was, again, the only employee there besides the doctor. I was the front desk, office manager, dental assistant. So when I was with the patient and the phone rings, I had to run and get it. And so doctor would be like, you know, it's okay, I can handle it. So that's kind of my experience. You can see, you know, what I kind of do on the daily basis. Um, and again, I didn't take any courses. Again, it's all with experience and just, you know, doing your own research. I would go on YouTube. There's so many de like dental YouTube channels, like Mental Dental. Um, there's another one that shows like a really HD process of procedures. So I would look at that. Um, so overall, just do whatever you can and do the research and you have to put yourself forward. Don't be shy. You have to go to, you're going to get so many no's, but when you get that one, yes, it's going to be so worth it. So that's my experience. Uh, I would love to chat more if you guys have any other questions. Um, but ladies, it was wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for coming. If you have anything else to share to the students. Um, what would be like one last advice you would give to pre dental students that want to become dental assistants? I think there were a couple of questions in That's the right. chat. Yeah, there's. A I would yeah, like no, to. We'll, we'll go over that. We'll go over that. I just want like one last. <laughs> oh, I thought you were about to end it. Okay. No. no. Um, Daniela, Daniela, you can go ahead. Um, one last piece of advice I would say is put yourself out there. Um, don't be shy to reach out to people. Like how Gazelle was saying, you might get a 
a whole bunch of no, but the one day you get the yes, you're going to learn so much. Definitely start off maybe shadowing, then become a dental assistant. And it's going to, it's going to help you so much to put yourself out there. You won't be surprised when you get to dental school, like, Oh, how do I work with a patient? Like, how do I talk to people? Like you'll have like all this prior knowledge. Um, so definitely put yourself out there. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Like just go for it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Go for it. Just don't be shy. Um, yeah, something I say, I say this like all the time. I'm like a broken record with this, but like, I just say, don't apply unless, until you're ready to like, un- to apply. Like you have everything you want to give yourself the best shot that you can possibly have. So just make sure, cause you, you want to, you only want to apply once, right? Like that's, the, that's the dream. So why would you apply if you, you know, if your application isn't the best it can be. So like, I just see, because I see so many pre dance that are rushing, like they're rushing, rushing, rushing. Well, guess what? Like nothing's going everywhere, anywhere. I didn't apply till I was, uh, I didn't get in until I was 26, which is like 26 is young, but it's not, it's older for a first year student. It's like they're like the typical. It's job. not right. It's yeah. not like the demographic. The so I'm just saying it. there's no race and there's no rush mm-hmm. because regardless you're, you're aging, no matter what, whatever, but like give yourself the best chance possible. Like don't waste your own time. Don't waste anyone else's time. You know, make sure everything is exactly the, as, as the best it can be. Um, and that's okay. Like if it's going to be a couple of years after your senior uh, year of college, because I just, I see a lot of kids stressing about this in it. And I just, I hope, I wish they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I uh, wanted to uh, add something yeah. to what you said that it reminded me of, and also don't feel like, like how you're saying, like the whole rushing, don't feel like you need to do something because other people have done it. Like, oh, if she got in right after her mm-hmm. seat. I should get into and don't take the DAT unless you feel yeah. don't do it just yes. because your parents are rushing you or your parents are telling you like, you have to do it like so and so already did it. no do it and like you're ready a lot of like I see a lot of prep courses or like dental advice on Instagram that's like the ideal uh timeline and it has them studying their junior year of college I'm like what no Why? I no, no, no. <laughs> Why I, I graduated 2021 <laughs> and I'm studying for it now like yeah. now I'm studying for it and I'm I did not do two months like I'm I think I make six months at the end of this month yeah. because I needed more than two months just because yeah. one person did two months doesn't mean that that's the amount of time that you need to study like go based off of what you know about yourself do not go based off right. what other people are telling you like yes like listen to their advice but don't do something just because that other person like did it like don't feel mm-hmm. right don't, don't do compare it. don't compare yourself to people don't compare yourself because people do that in my class like I I was doing that at one point and you just stop looking at what other people are doing because that just isn't going to help that's not going to help you everyone's Um, different yeah everyone's different so like like for me personally I didn't want to be doing the DAT while I was in my master's like I didn't want to be doing uh volunt like I didn't want to have 10 things on my plate I wanted to give my complete attention to everything at a time at one at a time because I'm not good at um uh, oh, what's the word? Uh, nice like task. multi multitasking. <laughs> I'm not good at multi. <laughs> I like to like put everything into the what I'm doing. So that was what at one time that was a DAT. At one time that was my master's. At one time that was volunteering at a, a marine uh, thing on the pier. Like it, everything. I just think just stop. It's not a race. Yeah. So just relax and fine. do what works for you, and you'll be happier yeah <laughs> you'll Definitely. sleep better you'll sleep <laughs> yeah take your time don't rush things don't rush. a lot of people have that oh I, I need to be like 23 or 22 yeah like, yeah like, I can be like 30 years old guys no you know like you're still gonna be a doctor you're still gonna be a doctor yeah. regardless of how old you are take your time take your time yeah exactly awesome. so to end off on these amazing ladies advice um I have two small advice for students, one thing that I kind of always tell them is if you go to a thrift store, now this is kind of like unconventional, if you go to a thrift store, you'd be surprised at how many dental books you can find there. I found this, it's not sponsored book, hold on, you can't see it. <laughs> I found, give me one second. Oh, 
this brand new dental assistant book. I don't know, like, and it's brand new and all this information is here. So you'd be surprised. You could find all these dental books because students may have taken the program and then they, you know, got accepted and they give their books away. That, and again, do your research. Have a cover letter at least. And I told one of the students, have a cover letter and take a good few days, go over like on YouTube, dental anatomy, dental uh, surfaces, dental tube numbering, all of that. And at least in your cover letter, you can say, you know, I have some knowledge at least of dental surfaces, dental numbering, all of that. So that way they're not going to be like, at least she knows how to do something. And at least she knows how to do um, identification of two surfaces. Does that make sense? Like have some prior knowledge. And when they see that, they're going to be like, oh, they're going to be impressed, right? So that's my two cents. We're going to get into questions now. Um, so, Jones. So, Marimita says, in what ways do you get practice? Do you get to practice the skills you learn as a dental assistant, let's say in sim lab in dental school? Um, so definitely hand skills when, if you guys ever do like making, like make temps or do temp, um, the denture adjustments, um, because so far we've had to do, like, we're already doing restorative with the drill. So I guess it helped a lot with our wax ups in the very first semester, but and it was more, I think it helped dental assistant, like hand skills. Yes, it did help a little with a little bit with the wax ups and stuff, but like more so, I think it helped just conceptually, like knowledge wise, like knowing like the tooth anatomy and numbering system in order of events, like in procedures, like it, because nothing was brand new. Like I already had, I would, I already saw it. So I guess it was more knowledge based because the hands on, you can't prepare for like drilling, honestly. Yeah. You just can't like in wax you ups or really weird. do drilling, right? You don't really do drilling as a dental assistant. That correct? No. Mm -mm. Exactly. Yeah. No. So like, yeah. that's why I was saying maybe with like the wax ups, but wax ups are, are so weird by the, like on their own. Yeah. Um, I really don't know how you can prepare with your hands yeah. for it, to be honest. It's more just the knowledge. Behind the knowledge. It. Yeah. Like procedures and all of that. Okay. Yeah. The knowledge was like 100% the most helpful thing ever. Right. And how would we begin assisting without proper licensing in regions where many clinics prefer certification? How would you approach reaching out to a, a dentist to assist? How do you guys want to answer? Yeah, Daniela, do you want to? Uh, they're asking without like having um like an, uh, a certification like where, or, yeah without having one you I feel like if you you said you did Aspen right Aspen's all over the U.S. you can go into <clears throat> and, you've, and there's a lot of Aspen's opening up recently because I know in my area they have opened up like three like close to each other if you go to mm -hmm. a lot of corporate like um dental clinics that's what they're called really right? like corporate yeah corporate um, yeah they tend to hire without you having uh like any type of certification and honestly if you're located um uh, south florida area a lot of dentists here tend to hire without any certification like you just show up mm -hmm. and you're like hey i'm willing to learn like train me and like i'll within two months like i'll be ready and like they most likely mm -hmm. hire, especially now with the shortage that we have of like dental assistants you can go anywhere just go and ask and put yourself out there like how we've been saying since the beginning just go ask and put yourself out there and I'm sure you'll you'll be able to have it yeah you'll definitely I'm telling you guys Aspen is like I had a I had such a good experience at, at Aspen I really did like I learned so much and like Danielle is saying they I don't think you'll have a problem getting a job there because they need help yeah nice and so another question we have is dental assisting certification four years everywhere. I know in the States it's there is, so. yeah, it's not four years. In Canada, there is um like private colleges that can do like under a year or like a year or two. I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's six months here. 
if I'm not yeah. mistaken, because it's like a it's technical... definitely not four years. I, I think no. hygiene is more four years, but assisting is like a year or two or less. At least. I'm pretty sure in here it's less because my school offered it for like adults at night. And if I'm not mistaken, it's like six months. You have to like complete a certain amount of like shadowing hours. Once you have that complete and you pass the exam, like you're good to go, which that's what I'm thinking. It's like six months or less. I know it's like a year or less. It's not past a year, a hundred percent. Yeah. When I was at the office, we had a few students that came. Um, they were dental assistant students. And so they had to go to an office. And I think, I forgot the word. It's not intern. Um, but they had to work for free just to get the hours and stuff, kind of like a co-op. And um, that's how they had to pass. They had to do like a certain amount of hours and then they can pass after they did like their exams and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's like a thousand hours, which is like six months. I'm pretty sure it's six months. Ours is just like 80 hours. Like it was very little. Yeah. So it's different everywhere, right? Yeah, I think um, so. Hi, Kara. Would you say it's better to ask for such opportunities in person or via email or online via job poster? I when I applied to so many places on um, Indeed. I applied Indeed, to yeah. so and then Aspen reached out to me there, um, knowing I didn't have like the certification. So, but I they saw my education background I think that helped a little bit but I would so I would recommend just doing everything online and also going through like pre-dental organizations and seeing if they have anything because I did get one opportunity through my pre-dental society as well Daniela how about you what would you recommend um I would say same thing go on indeed but also drive around like by your neighborhood and go asking in the clinics you never know if they're hiring I had a couple of friends who did that. I also would ask around, like I would ask like my aunts, my grandma, even like, oh, do you know the dentist that you go to if he's hiring? And I ended up finding through my dad, actually, the uh, dentist that I work with now, because he was like, his dad like worked with my dad or like sold stuff to my dad. And my dad asked him like, hey, your son is a dentist, right? Is he looking for a dental assistant? He was like, oh yeah, he actually is. Tell your daughter pass by. So ask around, like you never know. Yeah, I think for me, I would always say go in person just so they can see who you are. You can talk maybe a little bit more to the dentist besides just going online. Um, and again, have a cover letter. Like that's going to show a lot that you put in the time to kind of do your research on that office, your own research on the field. Um, and I had a student, like he asked me before, he's like, I've been trying to go everywhere. I couldn't, I always get no's. And I said, write a cover letter. And the next day he messaged me, he's like, I got a position right? So that's definitely going to help you out. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, we have, how is, okay, hi, I was shadowing a dentist last summer, and in between patient and break times, I found myself nothing to do. I wonder from a dental assistant slash office manager perspective, what would you expect slash wish the shadowing students to do during those hours? Example, offer to help out with dental assisting, or just in general, how should shadowing students behave in the clinic? That's a great question. Do you guys want to maybe start that off? I can answer, yeah. Um, definitely ask the dental assistants if they need help. Like, hey, like, do you need help cleaning these materials in the lab? Like, do you need help, like, preparing their rooms? Do you need help cleaning? Ask, like, if they need help with anything, because that shows initiative. Like, that's something that people like to see. Now, you're showing some type of initiative to, like, learn or work, and that can even lead to you being hired. If you're just, you know, standing in a corner, not really doing anything, and you're just, you know, on a far like looking it's better to just ask questions because and just ask like do you need help like I feel like that's something that I I did a lot when I first started shadowing that I wasn't a dental assistant yet we I would ask like, do you need help cleaning this room do you need me to like bring you any material just don't don't stand around like looking like you're doing nothing because people don't like seeing that people like seeing that you're constantly doing something how about you Sarah yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, what what Daniela said. Definitely, just trying to make it make everything a little easier for whoever's assisting, and, and you're just gonna learn a lot anyways by doing that. So, yeah, I have nothing to add other than that. Um, that was well said. Thank you. I think for me, I'm gonna add that um, 
if it's like dead silent, nobody's there. Yeah. I would, I personally, like when I was like in the beginning of office, when you had like no patients, I would like look into the room, say, okay, where are these materials? Like, okay, mm -hmm. is this, this is the ortho cabinet. Okay, what is this? This is a wine guard. This is this. I would go into the filling cabinet. I said, okay, this is, you know, the bonding. What type of bonding is this? Why do we use this matrix? What is it even for? Where is the needle? Like I would look at all the cabinets Damn. write down what's there what it's used for and then I would do my own research on it okay why do we use this bonding because it's better than this one why okay Plus I'll I love you if you start stalking yeah and I would, start ask, like, I would just sit there sit there and then I, I would go to the dentist I'm like what what is this for why do we use it and then he would start having a conversation like oh we use this for root canals and stuff um so again always try to seek out learning more information yeah, definitely. you know so um, a follow-up question. When we go in person, would you suggest that we print out a cover letter, resume, and transcript? Yes. I say print out at least a cover letter and a resume. Um, and just show like you are a pre-dental student. You have um the excitement and the passion to learn more about the field. And you I at least hopefully you did some research with prior, you know, dental anatomy knowledge to come bring all of that. Do you guys have anything to add? <laughs> Um, um yeah i saw one more about balancing work and school yes for us um so daniela did you want to go with this one first i for me it wasn't that difficult because it was like summer so it was like summer class so it wasn't that bad but the moment like the full-blown like fall spring classes started was when I stopped working and I focused and then I, I got hit with COVID like the following year which my plan was to like test out the waters and like undergrad and see how it was because it's not the same thing like summer with like fall and spring like we know those are like jam-packed so I was like hey for sure fall like and spring like the first year I want to see like how it goes if I'm like able to balance things and then my plan was to start working again uh the following fall and then people were like no 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 like sorry but we're not <laughs> I'm like okay it is what it is but yeah. I I don't think I'm a good person to answer this question because for me it was like a bit unfair like it it was cake I'm sure for you it was a bit harder I think I was um I'm trying to remember like because I I really I think I I graduated my master's in um the spring of 2021 and then I, I did my DHT, did interviews, and then started like really assisting after that. So I was balanced. For me, it was hard because I was balancing like two jobs and like applications and interviews. So I, I ended up quitting the job that had nothing to do with like the dental field, which was like bartending, and then just worked full time um, assisting. And I'm so happy I did because I had too much on my plate. I had to like cut out what wasn't relevant anymore. Right. So I, so I guess if you have to make some sort of sacrifices, I guess that's the takeaway is like cut out what is just not um, contributing to you getting like school, get, or if you're going to dental school, if you're, or if you're doing assisting, like whatever you're doing, just pri figure out what your priorities are. I think that's a great way to end um, the seminar. I'm going to end the recording. And um, we can have a more in-depth conversation, but thank you everyone for watching and coming on. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to DM us. And if you have any questions for Kara or Daniela, you can either DM us and we can get in touch or you can DM them separately. So thank yes, you. thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming and listening. Yes, thank you for listening <laughs> yeah. and for the questions. Yeah, there are really good questions. <laughs>